Let's check this. Hello everybody. Interesting. Good evening. Hey Paula, good evening. Hope everyone is having a great Thursday. We are getting started here momentarily. Hey, Mr. Lamonte, good evening, sir. Honey, you have your phone? Hi, sister and love, to Nikki. Nikki, good evening. All right. Executive producer is giving me all kind of signals. <laughs> God bless you, honey. Amen. We're going to get started and we're going to get to work. Amen. Here momentarily. Just giving enough people a moment to get in. Hey, Faith and Aaron. Good evening to both of you. You guys doing well? Hope you guys are doing well. Miss Paulette, good evening. Miss Faith, good evening. God bless you all. Hope everyone has been enjoying these fire nights. Um, I know we have. It's always good to to um, hear God talk to his people. I, I just think that's so fascinating how kind God is that he would talk to us. You know, because he always, he's always talking. Amen? He's always talking. Uh, contrary to popular belief, the Lord is always talking. I don't think he's silent with anybody. You know, man may try to uh, minimize his voice, but his voice is getting louder and louder in the earth. So we bless God for that. The Lord is kind. Hey, Davin, how you doing, my friend? Long time, man. Hope you guys are doing well. And congratulations on the blessing. Amen, of children. Amen. God bless you both. Yeah, well, we're going to get started. We're going to talk a little bit, continue our little mini uh, segment into the prophet, into his office. Uh, just trying to bring an understanding to uh, the body of Christ ish. Uh, what that proper role is, what he does, what things does he move in, the things he does when he's, he's operating, he or she, uh, proper can be either or gender. It's not just one one gender. There's a proper test in the Bible. A prophet is all the above, and both move with, with equal power. So we thank God for that, for being so kind to give us all genders. Amen. Um, I'm going to move this over here. Amen. My beautiful wife over there. Hi, Miss Connie. God bless you. We're going to talk about the Word of God, and we're going to do a quick recap of, uh, of last week. 
and I'm going to get started, which is my custom to wait at least for live seven minutes to give everybody to, to hop in. So thank you for your patience as we as we get this thing rolling and um, we're going to do some plowing um, the best we can. Hey, cousin. Hey, Stacy. God bless you. Hey, man, my cousin on him. I know it's going to be a good night. You on here, Stacy. God bless you, sister. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I know there's, a, there's some people who wanted to chime in from overseas, so I'm waiting uh, to see when they get on. There's uh, people who are blessed by the ministry who live all the way across the Atlantic, and um, they all they want to come on tonight uh, to get encouraged and all those type of things. And also a few people who have reached out to my wife and I um, who just enjoyed the last uh, session, and they want to they want to get on tonight. So. Um, but, you know, we're just going to just keep rolling. I'm sure they'll get on eventually. Amen. As my uh, executive producer will keep me on track. <laughs> Amen. We're going to teach on the word of knowledge. We're going to prophesy. We're going to beat the devil up, knock him upside the head until the white meat is showing, and then take his Jordans. Amen. So we're going to have a good night tonight. So God is kind. Amen. Now, last week we talked about the office of the prophet and what that means and how you can have a spirit of prophecy, you can have a gift of prophecy. Uh, spirit of prophecy that means everybody in the room can prophesy. Uh, this usually happens in a corporate setting when you have prophetic activations. Uh, people who normally don't move in the office or not in the office or don't have a gift can speak life and speak into people's life and God will talk through them. You have the gift of prophecy. Amen. When well, God uh, stirs you up and he, he has imparted to you a gift uh, to prophesy to people. And one thing that um, um, what happens is with the gift, I, I, always, I teach this in, in various lessons that, you know, it's a gift for a reason. You know, the gifts and callings without God are without repentance. That means God doesn't give you a gift and then take it back and say you can't use it. You know, you can't do that. That's, that's not the nature of God. If he gives gifts, he gives them. If, you know, if he took them back, then he would not have um, the gifts that he's given the man, the apostle, the prophet, the the evangelist, the pastor, and the teacher. Amen. So God is kind of that, that so forth. And then you have those who, like myself, who are actually commissioned by God, were born prophets and who are in the office of the prophet. That just means the prophet uh, has a, a badge in the spirit realm. He has a assignment to do. He has an official service. And there is a, a certain level of expectation from God to the prophet that he must be, he or she must be performing at. And hey, Doreen. Good morning from India. Hey, how you doing? Good evening from U.S. of A. God bless you. Um, so the prophet um, has the ability to get into the exhortation, edification, and comfort, but he also has an authority to go outside those realms as God uses him to either correct something, to go into the past, and to the present, and talk about the future. Uh, prophecy talks is foretelling. It goes not fortune-telling, but it's foretelling. It talks about things in the future concerning your life. And some things uh, may uh, confirm what's in your spirit, but some things may not confirm what's in your spirit. Okay? And, and as a prophet, you will prophesy things that that person may not have heard of that's coming their way. Amen? Uh, because prophecy does not have to agree with what's in your spirit. And I said last week, if that were the case, Mary would have known that she was about to give birth to a baby boy. At, by being a virgin, and that was not, that did not bear witness with her spirit, and it did not bear witness with her husband's spirit. But they received the word of the Lord who came to her as good news. So prophecy it talk, uh, should bring good news. It's supposed to build you up, talk about your future, and posture your heart into a place where you are expecting God to get certain things done. Now, something that my beautiful wife wanted me to go over, and thank God for a wife who uh, knows how I roll, is that. Prophecy, once it leaves that prophet's mouth, it is the recipient's job uh, to receive it by faith and expect it. And sometimes you have to war over your prophecy. Prophecy comes in two forms, either conditional or unconditional. All right. Conditional is if you will, I will. If you go there, this will happen. All right. This is God talking because he gives because most times you have to walk out things by faith with God. God prophesies a promotion but you don't apply for the job that coming that you want that's open, but you don't apply for it, then that is something you missed. It wasn't, it's not the prophet's fault. Remember that. 
and prophets have a bad rap um, that sometimes people think don't come to pass. That's not their prophet because once it leaves this realm of revelation, you have to store it. Amen. Now, there are prophecies that are unconditional that God does automatically. We've had testimony upon testimony upon testimony of people who have been involved with fire nights and how their prophecies have come to pass uh, quick, fast, and in a hurry. Amen. And um, one lady last week um, uh, received her word and you know, partnered with the word and everything she, that, that was said and done uh, happened the next day. And she said the whole entire week things were happening that was spoken concerning that night. Now, what does that mean? That just means God does what he's going to do. Amen. And God is going to say things and if you receive by faith like she did and others. Amen. Not just singing out one person, um, but this is just one example. I'm um, prophesying to a few people on the live tonight uh, in times past, and those words have come to pass. Now, I take no credit for that, amen, not at all, because I know when I get into that certain vein, it's not me doing the work. I just yield myself to God, make myself available, and as long as God wants to go, I'm available. So that's how God uses me. Uh, I get no glory or glitz out of those type of things because I think that's kind of uh, uh, prideful to think it's you and it's not, amen. Now, Moment to our subject for the night. Give me five minutes and, and then we're going to get to work. Amen. We have the word of knowledge. Now, last week, what you saw in operation was a prophet's mantle. The prophet mantle has strength in the revelatory gifts. That is prophecy. That is the word of knowledge. That is the word of wisdom. And that is the discernment of spirits. Last week, you saw heavy words of knowledge that talked about past issues that people may have been facing, things they may have known about. And then God gave them a solution, amen, and told them why certain things are hard. Some things that I don't know that happened to, that may have happened in their past, uh, but the word of knowledge comes uh, to talk about certain things that may be the problem, why people are not getting forward, amen. Hello, Frederico. Good, uh, good evening, sir. Um, so the word of knowledge is a, 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 a heavy revelatory gift. Sometimes you will hear prophets go back into genealogy and saying, a hundred years ago, your great, great, great granddaddy uh, did this, and this is what happened. That is that is all real, because when that thing is open to the prophet, at least for me, and how God uses me, it's open through a movie screen, and I can see, and I can see dates flashing, and God will give me uh, exactly what's going on in that particular scene. That's the word of knowledge in operation, to show people what happened and why things are rough, okay? And then we come to the present. The word of knowledge is also um, heavy dealing with uh, the present, perhaps um, there is somebody at work who is who putting your name uh, out there in a negative sense, and the prophet comes and says, this is what happened on your job, A, B, and C, but God's canceling it right now. And then you will feel a supernatural relief to who that, whoever that is um, of things beginning to come easier. Um, okay, uh, another example is I, God used me to prophesy to a young lady uh, who I did not know, at, um, and I told her that she had got around somebody who was a bona fide witch, and she didn't know it, and her name had been placed in a bottle and buried in a backyard, and that's why she's living, but in the spirit realm, she's spiritually dead. Now, did I know that? Absolutely not. And follow up with that young lady, um, she was uh, devin into certain things she, she should not have. Amen. She was trying to break free and wonder why she could not get no advancement in the things of God. So those type of things are what the word of knowledge is. And then you have the word of wisdom. The word of wisdom is simply solutions to things that are happening, okay? God says to pray 21 days and, and pray specifically about A, B, and C. Thus, usually from the prophet, that is a word of wisdom because God is trying to get something to the people or to that person that's going to help their life and bless their life, amen? Um, the word of wisdom is like you need wisdom for the future. You need wisdom for a business deal. Those things come out of the prophet's sphere and come out of the prophet's uh, influence to help people. Because God, listen, God cares about people. Man, I can't, I cannot stress it enough. He does not want people to uh, miss it. You know, God comes and say, um, I remember one time God used me, and I, and listen, I, I this prophet tries to stay away from relationships. But one particular instance, God had me prophesy to a young lady who was about to get married. And um, I told her at, through the, unto the Holy Ghost that um, God was canceling that particular union, and this is why. 
and begin to spell things out. And over time, those things that were spelled out uh, manifested and the person was liberated from a potential bad situation. Amen. So I think that, hey, if you are, <laughs> well, at least in my family, once my, my daughters and my sons get married, guess what? Daddy's going to prophesy to everybody with him. Amen. Because they didn't know what kind of future they have. And if the prophet or the man or woman of God who has faith enough to do it will put their word there first, that gives that particular union a launching pad into the future where they can look out for snakes and demons and devils. Amen. And work together to win uh, in life. Now, you have the uh, word of knowledge. We have the discerning of spirits. That's more for when we get into our deliverance area. Um, those who are, who are plagued by certain spirits and certain devils, where well, the case may be, the prophet has an ability where God opens his eyes and show him what's plaguing that particular individual. Amen. So that is a, a heavy tool, especially when you're moving in the deliverance vein. Now, in the word of knowledge, you have uh, genealogy prophecies, and I, I'm moving this um, where God has me to, um, that talks about things that happened uh, maybe a hundred years ago. Uh, this Sunday, I'm going to talk about um, hindrances to our future, and I'm going to deal with some of that with things that you and I had no knowledge of or no business of um, that's kind of plaguing us now, and the person that may have opened the door could be dead and gone. But we didn't know that when grandpa or grandma or whomever got involved with uh, Freemasonry or got involved with some kind of occultic practice, that that opened a door into the family because devils need invitations to get in. And sometimes we don't know that. Um, the devils come rushing in and they set up shop around that particular bloodline. And you know certain people, that, and you and I know certain people who who um, may have been plagued by life by certain things, or they may, they may have an addiction to certain things. You know, those always an entry point that happens somewhere. Uh, a lot of times when you see men who are full of lust, you know, they just, they just can't keep their eyes off a woman or, or they're perverted in many senses. You can trace that back to an absentee father. Now, if that were not so, then David would have been whole. David was rejected by his daddy, Jesse. Uh, he wasn't invited to the, the anointing experience. And what that cultivated in the king's life was a spirit of perversion. All right, he had a hole there. He had a father wound. And how did he? Man how did that manifest? That manifested by him messing with women. I mean, they said that he messed with Bathsheba. We read the story. And then when he's dying, they put a nice young damsel in the bed. And you can read that in your own reading of First Kings. And the Bible says that David was cold. So if people around you knew that you had a lust problem and they put in a, a nice young lady in the bed with you to warm you up and it didn't work, the Bible says the king is dead. Now, that's just a manifestation of a father wound, amen? And there's many things that can go down that way. But we also have, as believers, the power to change uh, the course of life uh, in, our, in our families. You know, perhaps the, fa the men of the family uh, told God no, but you tell God yes. All the women of the family told God no, but you gave God a yes. You are now considered the Joseph of the family, and you may go through a, a, a pruning season where it seems like God is not with you, but when you come out, God makes you second in command and gives you the rich lands of Goshen, and he makes sure your life is blessed, and then everybody connected to you can now dwell uh, in, in, in safety, surety, and just harmony as God uh, allows. Amen? Now, there's a whole lot that goes along with that. Amen? And this... This office, and it's, you know, like I said, it's misunderstood, and sometimes it's, it's abused. You have prophets, and, you know, I'm one of them. I'm not bashing prophets. I'm trying to explain. You have prophets who um, who use this office to profit, uh, P-R-O-F-I-T, profit. Is that right, honey? Is this my prophet? <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, it's late night. Amen. They use this office to, to profit off the people, um, saying things like, if you give me $100, $100 um, I'll give you the word of the Lord. And I think that's the most asinine thing a prophet can do when they're trying to, uh, when they're moving with the grace God's given them, is to charge people for prophecies. Listen, this prophet don't do that. Amen. I'll never ask you for money uh, when you receive a word. That's, that's, that's not my thing. Now, if you want to partner with me, I mean, and if the word bless you, sure. Amen. That's all good. Amen. Because when my wife and I receive words from prophets uh, around in the light, Amen. We so into our life because we're just so excited about um, God maybe singling us out or, or saying something about our future. We just we thank God for it. So we, we, we do partner with that particular ministry because we believe in the work that he or she is doing. Amen. So, again, um, back on course. You have <laughs> the word of knowledge deals with, uh, hey, Erica, 
deals with um, forensic level prophecy to where detail uh, upon detail, this is where names and numbers come out and where things are hidden and certain things that may um, be, I don't know, plaguing the whole family. Uh, it may be something to the point where you can't find it, but the pro God gives that prophet, that prophet prophetic insight into the situation, the problem that is uh, holding back the people. Amen. So the Lord is kind in that regard. Amen. And so, but we are going to move in those spheres. Uh, this is a safe space. This particular platform that we're building out, as my wife and I are building out the Lord's ministry. Uh, we'll have our in-person thing sometime in the future. Uh, what we do is here in our, in our local community, in our local region, uh, where we'll just have pro prophecy nights or prophetic nights, amen, or something like that. Because God does want to talk to his people. And it's, and you will hear things where you should not chase prophets, this and that. Nobody say you're chasing a prophet, but God put the prophet in the land to be a spokesman uh, to the people on his behalf. Amen. Now, this is why, and Sunday I, I get more into this, but this is why uh, God, when the fall of man came, God gives Adam, Cain, and Abel. And Abel was the first prophet because God needed a voice back on the earth since his man fell. Amen. And how's that true prophet? Well, if you go to Luke 11, verse 49 to 51, it talks about Abel being the first prophet that was killed. That's why Abel killed him, because the devil killed him, honestly, because he did not want that voice on the land. Because that voice gets in the land, it's going to change cities, it's going to change regions, it's going to redirect people, and things of that nature. Amen? So, there's a lot that goes in uh, to this office. And um, I am looking for uh, Auntie, but I don't see Auntie anywhere. Um, uh, so, okay, thank you, honey. I don't see Auntie anywhere. In the name of Jesus, but it's okay. Um, it's all right. Anyway, let me keep moving. All right, uh, my auntie was getting on tonight, and uh, she she um she had a few things that that she wanted us to, to work through, and also somebody else. I don't see them, but it's all right. We're gonna keep moving. Amen. We're gonna work this thing until until the Lord lifts. Amen. So, Lord, I thank you for this day. I thank you for this this service, the virtual service. God, I get out the way so you can talk to your people. Lord, I don't take this lightly. I don't take this assignment lightly. So, God, note me afresh to do what you have called me to do and what I was born to do. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. So, I'm going to um, start out. Now, listen, those of you who this is your first time coming on to Fire Nights, um, you're going to um, you're going to enjoy it. Amen. And the people who, uh, who have received words, um, you're going to enjoy it too. Amen. Because you might get another one. I don't know how, how, um, how the Lord's going to move with this thing tonight, but... Uh, uh, Mr. Davin Sykes, I'm going to start with you. Davin, I hope you're still there, sir, because uh, the Lord wants to talk to you and your wife. I just heard that. Uh, he wants to talk to you and your wife uh, because your economy is about to change. And what God is saying is, uh, Davin and Teresa, that you've been faithful over the small things. And I also, I'm seeing, I'm seeing almost like a, um, a collaboration between you two about opening your own thing. Uh, because you, you both have uh, gifts and talents um, that God wants to bring out into the, the marketplace. And um, God says, do not be afraid because he is with you. And I see, um, I see you, Dad, in signing contracts. I don't, I, for, I, don't, I don't, forgive me, I don't know what you do for a living. I know you used to go to the same ministry uh, some time ago. But um, I see you signing contracts. And there is almost like one, two, three Four, almost like four streams of income coming uh, to you and your wife. Hey, Devin, four streams of income coming to your wife based on contractual things. God is giving you favor in the industry. Amen. God is giving you so much favor. If you know it or not, I'm looking at your name. I'm looking at the, I'm looking at, uh, the executives uh, speaking highly favorable of you. Hey, Providence. Um, all right. Um, speaking highly favorable favorable of you about um, what you're doing, the type of spirit you bring, the joy you're bringing, and all of those types of things. And God says for you to go forth. He says he wants you to go ahead and plan out um, the next five to ten years. He said if you can write that out, you plan out um, your business practice, the things that you want to do, the things you want to you uh, accomplish. My God, see, I saw that too. Uh, professional cook. <laughs> um, he wants you to, to plan out the next five years because God says there is property for you. There is resources for you. 
there is a good name for you that's already been established in, in the industry. So God said, all he needs you to do is move by faith. He said that when you move by faith, he said he'll open a door even wider because uh, the door is wide open. But him making it wider means that you're going to be the ability. I don't know why I keep seeing. Um, yes, yes, I do. Um, you, sir, my God, you, sir, are going to move. And forgive me, not forgive me, but listen to me for a second. Because I see uh, Chef Gordon Ramsay in my front room. So you know where I'm going with this. You, sir, are going to move in the restaurant business, and you're going to have multiple locations. You're also going to have not only multiple locations, but I see a school you're going to start uh, where chefs can come and get encouraged. They can come and get trained. Uh, you're going to teach them in a spirit of excellence all the things in your hand. Matter of fact, I see you even as a child. You always had hands that were creative, and God has put a stamp on your hands where anything you touch and create, God Blessed, amen. And so you were drawn to the to the culinary arts world um, because that's where God is taking you from. Not only to feed people in a natural sense, but when you partner with God, God says He said you'll be able to feed people in a spiritual sense. Ministry for you and your wife does not have to be within the four walls, but it can be in the restaurant business, and you can make sure that the word of the Lord and, and God's presence is in your establishment. And God said when you honor Him, almost like um. You know, the owner of Chick-fil-A, how he really honored God and didn't work on Sundays and he put a demand on family cohesiveness and how he has blessed Chick-fil-A because we all eat it, amen, uh, beyond measure. <laughs> he said the same type of grace will be upon uh, that thing that you put your hand to where you will keep um, almost like you will get to a place in life where your work will work for you. But it will have the, the, the stamp of God on it. And God says, move forward because in the next five to ten years, he said, it's available to you if you move by faith. He said, don't despise small beginnings, my God. Even with your contracts, you're going to be getting. They may seem small in terms of like the audience. But there is a time, I'm telling you, uh, Davin, there is a time set for you by God himself, where it's going to be almost like you're going to get shuffled into a room at the highest level in that particular field, and it's not going to be time to prepare, but it's going to be a time for you to be prepared, amen? So this is what God is doing, even in your dreams. I see God has shown you several dreams, so pay attention to those. He has shown you several dreams of what uh, he wants to do with your life, and even giving you a glimpse of you, my God, seeing the people out there being blessed and seeing people saying and giving you first class reviews and almost as like celebrities are going to call you in and your staff in and you're going to have such a massive network that they're going to call you in to do weddings, they're going to call you in to do big events and they're not going to pay the cheap prices so you don't have to worry about somebody getting over on you. It's going to be almost as if they're going to pay you not only your standard price but they're going to pay you my God, uh, almost like if you charge $100,000 for the event, they're going to give you a tip of $100,000 because that's the type of favor that you even have upon your life now. The devil has tried to lie to you and say that you don't have any favor based on certain things that may have happened in the past. But the Lord on tonight is saying that the devil has been a liar. And don't even listen to that. Matter of fact, he, I see the devil... Um, sending people your way to doubt the call of God upon your life or to doubt what you're trying to do. So God said, according to even Matthew chapter 6, when Jesus said, don't let the left hand know what the right hand is doing, God wants you to move into a season of preparation and silence at the same time. When you're writing a vision, you'll make it plain. But he said, be thorough with your writing of your vision. He said, because the way you write it out and the way you detail it, he says, God is exactly going to do it just like you write it because it's a faith move and God already knows what you're going to write so he wants you not to uh, limit yourself saying I don't have this I don't have that don't even listen to the devil keep moving with God when it comes to writing your stuff and even uh, for you Teresa being an undergird being a good help for him and, and being a, a, a person of encouragement God says he's going to uh, fill you back up because you're going to have to almost be like his uh, chief of staff one that knows how to see things and understand things things and, and, and when to say no and when to say yes. He said even your job right now is training you in that way to see certain things and to provide wise counsel.
counsel on what to do and what not to do. And even when you think it's boring or stressful, it's God preparing you uh, for the bigger family stuff that's coming your way. Because here's what happened. I, I am tracing back, and I don't know what happened in 1985. I really don't. But it, at least God's not showing me. Amen. Um, I see there was a um, um, almost like a, a, a intersection of the spirit and the natural where, um, Teresa, this is your mother, um, where they had to make a decision in 1985, and what happened was they made the right decision. This is why the favor is moving upon you in a perpetual way. My God in heaven, so be blessed, and you you two just write that thing out because there is there the mantle to move in great prosperity is upon you. And um, also, um, Teresa, don't be afraid. Hey, Mershanda, how you doing? Don't be afraid to go into deep intercession because God says his ear is to your voice right now. As you said and as you pray it, God is saying that he is dispatching angels on your behalf. This is why the devil tried to hide a pregnancy from you, but it could not be hidden. And this is why the devil's been trying to make those things tight, uh, those things rough um, around you. But but God said, mm, he said, stay in his face because the the amount of influence and the amount of, of, of favor that's upon your life, he has to sharpen you in the things of God and in the things of the spirit. Amen. He's sharpening you in that in that regard. So do not be afraid, God says. Don't be afraid of, of, of the terror by night or the arrow that flies by noonday. Because God is with you and God is helping you. Ooh, my God, God is helping you. Almost like you have a, um, this is sweet Teresa, you have an, uh, how can I say this? It's like the angels that came to visit uh, Abraham in the Bible. They came to help him, even though um, they were going uh, to a city and they were helping Abraham and talking with him. You have angels all around you that are ready to assist you in what you need. Your life is about to change. I don't even know why I'm going this way, but your life is about to change where God is not only opening up the heavens to you and, and Davin, but also he's opening up the dream world to you at a greater measure. Because in both your dreams, God talks to both of you because you are a both of you are a dreamer of dreams this is why you're so drawn to the prophetic my god because it's a part of your dna and where god uses you and not only will you dream dreams you will help other people dream dreams i see you both um uh, counseling people and, and interpreting dreams. Matter of fact, even as I'm prophesying, I see two mantles falling on both of you right now. The gift of interpretation of dreams is upon you both. And my God, so go forth and even when God, when God wakes you up and you have that feeling about the dream, it's the interpretation ready to come forth. Because a dream without an interpretation is vanity. That's what God is saying. Amen. So all the dreamers y'all have, you need interpretation. So God is mantling you. Even I'm imparting it to you now as a prophet that you will be able to interpret dreams. My God in heaven. And not only that, I see this turning into a, um, I don't know why I just saw the dream series come up. I see something turning into where um, uh, for ministry's sake, that is your sphere of influence. That is what you two, that is your calling into, into that arena. So be not afraid about your calling. God said he's sharpening things with the both of you. This is why you have to be free from control of men. You have to be free from control of, of, of being inside of a system, inside of a government or something like that. You have to have your own thing. Listen, you you have to have your own stuff. That's the, I heard God has heard that. You have to have your own stuff. You, you cannot be bogged down with man and man's plans. He says, while you're working, work your work. Your work is the assignment God's given you. But we understand you have to work your work. So while you're working your thing right now, when you get off from work, work the other work. Amen. Because there's greatness upon you. There's prosperity upon you. And there is such a, a, a goodness of God for you, your family, 
And my God, I see the devil even trying to come against both of you guys with sickness. And the devil is a liar. My God, you have the power out of your own mouth to turn that, that stuff right back at the at hell from which it came. Because God says, good health shall be your portion. And you don't have to worry about leaving the earth prematurely like those before you did. God says, because he has promised you with long life, he shall satisfy you. Because he is so excited about your future. Amen. The Lord is kind. So God bless you, um, Davin and Teresa. Uh, hoping one day we, we will all get to get see everyone again when uh, this thing passes over. So God bless you and Davin. Uh, and God bless your word. Amen. So God, we thank you for their word, God. May everything come to pass, God, to lift them, God, into greater realms in the names of Jesus. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Look at that. We work every evening on business. There you go. Amen. Keep working at work. My God. Hey, the Lord is kind of stuff. I don't know, but God knows. Amen. Wow. Even the baby was sick last week. See, the devil's alive. Amen. There's such a greatness upon you. I'm telling you, there's such a greatness upon y'all. I'm waiting for Auntie to get on because um, you might want to call Auntie and tell Auntie to come on here because I, I can't I can't get off until she gets on. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, honey. Amen. We're talking about um, uh, my auntie supposed to uh, post chime in. And God spoke to me about her um, all the way uh, coming from Washington, D.C. today. But amen. Anyway, um, moving along. So what you guys just saw was the word of knowledge, prophecy, word of wisdom, all in one package, all in one cup of uh, uh, prophetic moment for this particular couple. Amen. So this is how God moves in, in realms like that. Amen. As, as he uses the prophet. So uh, we're going to, to keep moving. And uh, my wife is giving me a list. Of, uh, and she does help me out because I can't see all the comments, uh, but she can. Um, God has given me a, a list of, of people who are, who are, who are on here. Uh, so um, I am going to go with another. All right, well, I just call her. Amen. All right. I was waiting for auntie um, because that's important. Her word's important. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. So the Lord is kind. Amen. Um, so where are you, Miss Gwendolyn Williams? Are you still on here? Uh, give me a, a shout or give me something in the comment box um, because the Lord wants to talk to you. Amen. So prayfully, you are still here. Um, God bless you, Miss Gwendolyn Williams. And while Miss Gwendolyn Williams is, is coming into the comment box, uh, Dr. Marshanda, it is so nice. Uh, to see you, sister. God bless you. And I just hear the word of the Lord for you. Um, clientele and favor. My God in heaven. That's what I just saw uh, come across my, my vision screen here. Clientele and favor. My God, I don't even know what you're doing in this season. I haven't talked to you so long. Um, but I understand that um, clientele, honey. Oh. Uh, clientele and favor is your portion. Amen. Hey, Miss Williams, hold on one sec. Amen. But Miss Marshanna, there is a full measure of restoration coming to you. I see that. I see that. I see almost like um, the devil's trying to um, hinder your purpose or hinder what's in your heart to do. Almost like it's almost like a sabotage team has been deployed by hell. Uh, not only uh, trying to, uh, I don't know, take down what you're trying to build, but also try to attack your mind. But on this day, I'm hearing the Lord say, uh, the devil is a liar. He said, you know what? You will move in that own, that own thing of yours. And this must be prosperity tonight. And there is such a, um, because your heart for children and your heart uh, to make sure that they're developed right and your heart to counsel people. God said the spirit of wisdom and counsel is upon you and it's your portion. As a matter of fact, you're going to have to, I see this in the future, you're going to have to almost like, you know, when you know you are like, when God has blessed you and, and in such a way that, that your name gets out and everybody's trying to get, come and see you, you're going to have to train up people under you because the demand for you is gonna be so great that you're not gonna be able to do it by yourself. So you're gonna have to start even now looking for people. You don't have to hire them now, but in the future, uh, maybe identify some folks who have a license, who have integrity, et cetera, et cetera, that can help the practice uh, move because it's gonna be like, well, we want, we want Dr. Michelle, and we want, listen, you, the, the people are gonna, gonna have to get uh, uh, Dr. Jones uh, or Dr. Johnson down the hallway because you're gonna be too busy. You know how you like, you have that favorite one everyone wants to go to, amen, but, <laughs> 
<laughs> it's almost like um, God is uh, blowing on this thing. Ooh, that's, that's what I just heard. I see God and I see him blowing just on your entire life. And God said, well, the devil meant for bad. God said, he's going to turn it around and make it for your good. So you get ready. I just see just a whole, just a, a whole shift in economy for you. I know you're already blessed. Amen. We thank God for that. But I'm talking about the, the, the blessing that, um, that goes to a certain level where you be like, my God in heaven, you just, because you, you always been a giver and the devil tried to even fight you in that, but you've always been a giver. And God said he has seen the seeds from time past. He's seen seeds now. He's seen how you have honored spiritual leadership, even the leadership you're under now, how you promote and how you help and serve. God said he does not forget um, works of service when his people do with a pure heart and a pure motive. So God is going to use you in almost like a, a way where your, your whole family is coming out. I see this in the spirit. I see you sitting on, on a throne Almost like what Joseph said, but I see your family coming in and they they know you, but they don't recognize you because you look different than what they remember you as. And I'm, I'm talking to a point of spiritually speaking and also in influence. They can be like, my God, um, Marshanda is doing this and that. And here we are because of her obedience. We're benefiting off this and the whole family is getting blessed. My God, I, I see the blessing on your sisters. I see it on your, on your mom, your dad, uh, your children, especially, especially, oh, I just saw your little girl, especially your youngest daughter. There was such a blessing on that little baby. My God. You're, that's almost that's your twin anyway. <laughs> your twin. Um, I see such a blessing uh, upon the family, and I see even like um, I don't know how to say this. It's just it's like a full recovery. That's what God is saying. A full recovery uh, for you and your household. Uh, the devil tried to come in and snatch things away and to disrupt and dismantle and almost like they were trying to make a spectacle of your last name and even your family name. But God says a full recovery is your portion. 2022 is going to be a, a year for you. Ooh, I heard this. A year for you where if a book was written, people wouldn't believe it because the way God not only is going to bless you, but how God is going to use you because the prophetic spirit is active in you. So you may uh, just be a doctor over here, doctor over there, but God is even calling you to higher heights. This is why the hell has been so intense, even to the point where I see the devils with pitchforks. I see them trying to attack your mind, almost like they're trying to dig, dig into it and make a stronghold. But God has burnt that thing every time because guess what? God so cares about you and so loves loves you, that God has never thrown you away. Although, my God, the devil may have come to you and said, God is done with you. You're not going to do this. You can't have it. That's not the story I'm looking at. I'm looking at your book right now, and I see a woman going towards her, her, her glory and, and greater end, full of wisdom, and I see a crowd following you. I see people come behind you, giving wisdom and revelation, and you're teaching women. I see this I see this in so clear as day that you're going to even have a ministry of teaching teaching women about how to do things and how to keep their stand and how to do things with power and to believe God against all circumstances. And you're going to teach them how to get out of their past because a lot of women, are going to, if you know it or not, God has given you influence even in that sphere of dealing with women. You have such influence around you and people may not tell you this, but you have influence with that. But you're going to teach them how to come out, how to be bold, how to be whole. And you're going to help them. I see you even going uh, down to, to, to a, a shelter, giving the people a, um, a almost like a, um, a women's shelter. My God, giving them hope and talking to them and sitting with them and telling them what, what's possible and what God could do. And almost like they're going to say, can, can Dr. Mr. Santa come back? And they're going to be asking you for everywhere. Amen. So you're going to need a staff. Amen. So God bless you. Clientele and favor is your portion. Woo. Clientele and favor is your portion. Amen. So God bless you, Miss Marshanna. Uh, look forward to the day of seeing you guys again. Hope you're doing well down there where you guys are at now. All right. God bless you, sister. God bless you. Um, okay. Thank you, honey. Um, thank you, honey. Let's see here. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Mr. Williams, how you doing, ma'am? Um, God bless you, Miss Williams. Amen. Miss um, Williams, what the Lord is saying to you. My God, let me, let me grab some of the drink. 
Miss mm -mm. Williams, I hear the Lord say that um, with you, I hear the Lord say, uh, legacy continues. Woo, my God in heaven, that's heavy. Legacy continues. That's what the Lord just said in my ear. Legacy continues. I don't know what's going on in your life at the moment, but God is telling me to reassure her that legacy continues. I don't know what that means to you, um, but I hear God. As a matter of fact, he just took me into, into the spirit room. I see, your, uh, I see a host of hell uh, coming against your family. My God, it even coming against you. Almost it's like um, because of your, your, your heart to serve and your heart to, to be in the things of God, uh, the devil has launched a full out scale, almost like war against you and yours. Almost to the point where um, the death angel um, was trying to visit your family in a great capacity. But God says he is the, uh, the preserver of life. And the devils could not kill you and that of yours because there is a great call upon your life. I see you moving in realms of not only, I almost see almost like a, um, I'm in a secretary's office, almost like a, um, you're training people, Amen. That's what I'm seeing here. Um, and I see God saying that you have done some great work in the past, but now it's time for you to be rewarded. I almost see like um, 2022 and beyond being a year of powerful uh, restoration. I don't know what what was lost concerning you and your family, but I see the, I see the, I, the devils came and took some from y'all. And almost as like they took it from under your nose and the devils tried to lie about it and use men to lie about someone. Someone stole something from you. There we go. And God has said he's going to bring that thing back uh, full circle with interest. So he said, you need not worry about that issue. He said, it's going to be a full recovery for you and your family. And I see, I see the male seed of the family almost as if the devil has been hot on their trail for a very long time. I don't know why we're in the family vein for you, but their, your last name and your particular family has been on the hit list of hell for a very long time. But God is saying on this day, you're gonna see the will of God manifested uh, in great measure in your, your nephews, your nieces, your own children, your own family, your own life. It's gonna be almost like an um, expedited, almost like time made up. Because God is has has been well pleased. You come from a family that um that really served God. I see that in the spirit that really like loved God. And sure, there were some 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 bad apples here and there, and they're not really bad. They just didn't know what they were called to, the, uh, and that's okay. But God is bringing a thing all the way back together where it's going to be almost like a cohesive uh, family in the name of Jesus, where you will be um, able to enjoy each other. I don't even know why I'm going here, but you will be able to enjoy each other almost to the fact where I see the devil trying to start some quarreling up in the family. That's what I'm seeing. I see the devil trying to start some quarreling up where people don't talk to people, you know, old family members not talking. But God said that, hey, he is changing the trajectory of the whole thing. And God said he's going to do it by summer's time. I just saw that. Summer's time, there's going to be a, a newness of the family unit. And it's the God said, get ready. And there is so much owed to you. I see the devil has taken a, a, a chunk out of your own economy. And almost to the point where uh, you suffered great loss in the past. But God said that was a, a, uh, a ploy of hell. But God said full restoration is your portion. Amen. So it's a, it, this is a recovery year. And so what God's doing, he has opened the heavens upon your family. And you're going to start to see supernatural debt cancellation. And they're not going to know, but you're going to know because you're getting the word of the Lord. They're not going to know they owe something to somebody. And then they're going to call the pay and they're going to say, paid in full. That's going to be your word 
for the entire year. You're going to hear that and you're going to experience paid in full. That is your portion. My God. Thank you, Lord. Now it's getting strong now. It's paid in full. Even the things you have now, even your home and your car, paid in full. It's Lord, the Lord is saying because of what you've done uh, in times past, your works of service um, have been a, a, a blessing not only to the kingdom, but your works of service have been a blessing to the Lord's nostrils and to his whole being. And he said, even when you serve, my God, he will stand up and say, why, my God, do this for them. Send us over here. But the devil tried to come and sabotage what was, what was there for you. But God is saying on tonight, those devils are sabotaged. This is why you have to pray when you when you are in, in your prayer time. You have the authority to rebuke the devil and even come against him. And you have the, the, the ability and the power to bind and loose. And God wants you to use that authority. He said, you've always had it. This is why you pray the way you pray. Even when you think you're not praying, you're talking, it's still prayer to God. And God said, when you come into an error, error with him, when you are moving in, in, in power like that, he said, I will reverse the tide even for people you pray for, even for people that you did. It, it doesn't have you no know, deep prayer. You can say, I, I, I pray to God, open that door, and it'll be open. Because that's how God is going to back your word. Because guess what? He says, I can trust Gwendolyn with new revelation. I can trust her with power. I can trust her with certain things because it won't go to your head. God says she's a very humble woman. My God, you are very humble. And God honors that he lifts up the humble. Amen. And I also see, woo, I also see in, in, in the past, and we're going to deal with this, I see, I'm seeing back in your childhood, I'm seeing some wicked decrees that were made in ignorance over you. And even behind your back, there were some wicked decrees. I'm, I'm watching you walk away because you got in trouble for something, and the person in authority in that particular room says some things that carry weight in the spirit. Woo. But on this day, so we decree over you that that uh, demonic decree, that muzzle order, that wickedness decreed upon your life is broken today, and you will receive a double portion. You you know what? God says, I'm tacking on time to your life. Time that was lost, God said he's tacking on time, just like he did for Hezekiah. He has, he's tacking on extra time for you so you can experience the goodness of God. And you're going to find yourself, seems like in the next two years, your life is going to be turned upside down, not in a bad way. Amen. Not in a bad in a bad way, but it's going to be turned upside down where people will not be able to access you. All the leeches and all the snakes who have tried to take from you and do certain things uh, uh, behind your back. Not only will God going to expose them, but the leeches are going to dry up and you will you will see it. Amen. God says, you don't, daughter, you don't have to fight this battle for the battle is not yours. It belongs to God. My God in heaven, the Lord said he's a banner over you. He has been a banner over you because he has had his hand on you even since you were a little child. My God in heaven, since you were a little child, God said his hand has been on you in a unique and unusual way. This is why people have never understood you. Uh, people who have gotten close to you didn't understand the way you think, amen, because of how God uses you and how God, how God, how God loves upon you. And what God and how God thinks about you. I see a time in your early 20s where the devil almost took you out of here prematurely. Amen. But the angel of God, I'm watching him with a flaming sword stand in front of you. Woo, my God in heaven. And that particular demonized devil could not pass gold. He could not collect $20. And he could not take you out. Because God said your life is preserved. And your life is preserved for a reason. And because you're here in 2022, God says you're going to enjoy a, a, a double blessing for your trouble. Amen. God bless you, Miss Gwendolyn Williams. Amen. Amen. So God bless you. Are we still going strong on no auntie? Wow. Okay. You guys are wondering why I keep asking for auntie. Because auntie, uh, that's my wife's aunt, but I call her auntie. Amen. Because <laughs> I wanted her to get on tonight. Um, because... Well, we'll see if she gets on. Amen. The Lord is kind. Amen. The Lord is so kind. I'm glad everyone is still on. Thank you for your kindness. And thank you for um, uh, sticking with me as I, I work this tapestry of revelation. Amen. So the Lord is kind. Give me one second here. And we are going to, to move powerfully in um, in in uh, the things of the spirit. One of my kids was calling, but they had to go to voicemail. They don't want nothing. 
They want some money. Amen. Now, anyway, um, anyway, Miss Doreen, are you still on from India? Miss Doreen, Doreen Pant, uh, let me know if you're still on. Amen. Uh, God bless you, Miss Doreen, if you're still here. Um, honey, if you see them, baby, can you let me know? All right, I'm gonna keep moving um, uh, down the line uh, because I want to prophesy and release the word um, over to. Hey, Miss Kim, how you doing, ma'am? Uh, I want to release the word over faith real quick. Um, I'm away from Miss Doreen uh, um, Pant. Amen. Faith, how you doing? <laughs> God bless you, faith. I hear the Lord saying for you that you are moving into a season where great faith is going to be cultivated inside of you because of the assignment attached to your life. You may not know this, um, but you may have an inkling that there is a gift of faith. My God, there is a gift of faith that God is trying to not only develop in you, but impart in you. So God said he's going to take you around uh, the, the faith uh, uh, training rooms, amen. And he said, do not be afraid of the tests that are coming your way. It's a development from God. And this is not to scare you because you're going to pass the test. God is giving you the answers to the test. And here is the answer to the test. Trust God. That's your answer, God is saying, because God is going to take you to a realm because he has to cultivate this because the assignment on you and your husband life is beyond what you can see and think at the moment. But God says, when you get to a place, my God, faith, I see you moving. Um, I see you moving uh, heavy in the realm of miracles, my God, and wonders. You're going to be a young lady. And I ain't talking about 40, I'm talking about a young lady that's going to move in the power gifts. The working of miracles is going to be a part of your mantle. And people are going to walk into the service who cannot see. And you're going to be so stirred in your spirit that you're going to go up and, and lay hands and they shall recover their sight. Even to the point where limbs will grow out. Don't thank your strength. God says trust him. But he's going to cultivate that, um, that gift of faith inside of you. He says keep on studying his word. As a matter of fact, get around the, the the, the teaching on faith, ask the questions to your mentors, how faith works, because you're going to need the inspiration, you're going to need the impartation, because guess what, the ones you call mentors, my God, move in a powerful gift of faith, and so what's going to happen is, when that time comes, there's going to be an impartation where it's going to expedite you what would take people 15 years to get. It's going to take you one night to move in. Amen. Because there's going to be an impartation of, of, of into your mantle of the gift of faith. And we're going to see it. And we're going to see it in such operation that it's going to awe even the, even the, the, uh, the agnostic. It's going to awe even the atheist that there has to be a God. I'm telling you, there's going to be a time faith. Woo, there's going to be a time faith where, um, you're going to have, God's literally going to take you out of the back and set you right there in the front. Because God says the only way that he is going to get you to move with him is he has to put you on front street. And he ain't talking when you're old. He's talking soon and very soon. Now, soon can mean a year, two years. God's soon are different from our soon. Amen. But the key to the matter is, is that you're going to have to put yourself around uh, faith talkers. He said the devil's been trying to attack your mind ever since you were a little girl. I see little faith walking around looking like a Zell, your, your youngest baby. I see little faith walking around and I see the devil's having an understanding that this young lady has a call upon her, but we don't understand what the call is, but what we're going to do is we're going to doubt and put doubt and unbelief and fear inside of her. So that's been a three-pronged process, even so you can't move in the call of God. But on this day, and even at the days to come, and even in days past, God has been taking those things out of your heart, because guess what? You will have to move in faith. You're going to have to say to a mountain, be that removed and be cast into a sea, and it shall happen. But God says He's going to teach you that certain way. He said, "Oh my, my God!" Almost like um, you're going to move uh, in such a realm where almost like you're going to have you're going to be able to, to to train people how to trust God even in life's circumstances. That's such a great call upon you. I know you know this already, but I'm just reiterating what God has showed me. There's such a great call upon you. Um, I don't want to get ahead of myself or get premature. Something that I have to hold. Uh, for certain reasons. So I'm going to hold that piece. But there is a great call upon you, faith. And you with you too, Aaron. I know you're, you're on the phone. Are you on the, on the Facebook? There's such a great call that um, you don't have time to doubt. Amen. And how faith works, and you'll learn this over time, is you have to first believe it 
before you even see it. And that's in operation for you and your family right now. Amen. So God bless you, Faith. You move in power. You move in faith. Um, and this is why your name is Faith. Amen. <laughs> because God's going to use you in that room at a greater measure. I'm not talking about like um, like some people like to, um, I don't know, um, say they have faith, but they have no faith. But God said your faith will be tangible and to be recognizable. Amen. So God bless you. And God bless you and Mr. Aaron. Amen. Uh, God bless you both. Uh, did a Dorian paint come out? I don't see you. All right, we'll keep moving. Amen. So God bless you. Um, let's see here. I am moving in this thing as God, God highlights. Wow. My the, the executive producer keep on <laughs> giving me more people. Stacy, where you at? This is my cousin. Stacy, are you still on him? Are you still on Stacy? I'm moving, and you just came up before me. Amen. All right. I'll wait for you to say something if you're on here. Amen. Um, God bless you. Unstoppable faith. Amen. Amen. Barbara Rose. God bless you, Barbara Rose. God bless you and your family uh, forevermore. I just decree over you, Miss Rose, that long life will he satisfy you. And I just decree over you that the heavens are open. And I decree God's blessing over you and your family and your children, your nieces, nephews, those who are connected to you. I just open the heavens as God's prophet because I'm authorized to over your entire family. I see where the devil has fought your family for generations. And you have been good to people, and so has your family. Your family has been good to a lot of people. You, your family has done things in secret. Oh, my God, not in a bad sense. They've done things in secret to help people out and did not say anything about it to anyone. But the eyes of the Lord are everywhere, going to and fro, beholding the good. Amen and the bad, but in this particular family name, it's all good, amen, and I'm going back, and God has taken me back, and I'm looking at a time where there was oppression in the land, and there was a time where your family helped out people who were in need, people who were oppressed, your family hid people, I'm looking at it right now, I'm looking at a whole crowd of them, I'm looking at them uh, protect, protecting and feeding them, and there was a covenant made with God, and God says um, that his the covenant from back then all the way until now, has been established in your family. And God said, this is the hour and this is the time for a great release upon your family. So God is releasing this year. He said he's releasing this year the supernatural blessing relief package upon your family. Amen. Because of things that were done, he said a good name is desired. And your family has a good name, even amongst the elite. I see them uh, being favored because someone set a standard of integrity and service and kindness. And God says, what your family has sown, even you, Barbara, he said, now it's time for recompense. Amen. So there is great recompense, not only you, but your entire family. Mark my word on tonight as God's prophet. You're going to start to get phone calls from uncles and aunts and all of the above and children. And they're going to say, you know, I was going to work the other day and all of a sudden I got promoted. I was going here and all of a sudden my house sold. Uh, I'm trying to sell for certain years. I was going here and someone gave me some land. It's almost like um, the perpetual blessing of the Lord is upon and in your family. And it shall not stop. I hear God saying, shall not stop. Even to the end of the age, your family will live in prosperity. They will live in peace. They will live in tranquility. And they will continue to honor the Lord. Amen. So you go forth in everything that you're doing. And don't be afraid to open up things uh, that you thought were impossible. Because there is there is such a, uh, a gift inside of you. Hey, Doreen, you're next. There is such a, a gift inside of you, not only to exhort and to encourage, but also to see and to know. Amen. There's a grace upon your life for that particular vein. Amen. To see and to know. And God says that he's going to open your eyes even wider in the spirit room where you're going to have to be able to a point where, my God, <laughs> You're going to have to uh, get language for what's coming your way. So study those books that's been in your heart. Go for them and let God be the finished writer 
of your story, Miss Rose. So God bless you and God bless your future. You're such a, just a blessing. My guy, you are, you are a blessed family. So be blessed and go forth and conquer in Jesus' name. Hello, Miss Doreen. God bless you uh, all the way in there. We bless you um, from the U.S. of A. And thank you for tuning in. I heard the Lord saying for you that there is a change coming, not only to you, but coming to your household. I see God um, moving things, almost like God is shuffling. God is shuffling things out of your way to make a path clear. I see God coming down and putting his hand on you and your entire family, because there is a desire to serve God and a desire to know the true and living God. And God said he's going to use you. In this, as a matter of fact, he is opening up your sphere of influence this year. He said you're going to be uh, almost like uh, you, have, you have a gift to teach just like Paul had. So you understand revelation. You understand knowledge. As a matter of fact, you had an encounter with the Lord. And God has said, that's going to be your testimony, amen, that an encounter with God. And you're going to be able to turn the hearts of men who have turned to idols and women who have turned to idols and wickedness. And they're going to come and say, yes, who is this God you're talking about? Because you're going to have such a testimony that God is good. So you go forth in ministry. God is going to use you. And he says, you know what? You don't have to worry about facilities and people accepting you. God has granted you favor, not only with the local people, but God has granted you favor even now with the tribals and the councils, the mayor, all the above. Amen. God has, is using you in such a way that there's almost like doors flying open for you. Even as I'm talking, I see doors in the city council open up. I see doors in government opening up for you. I see doors. You're being sought out by people in, in an influence away and also God says to make sure your passport is current because there is also travel associated with your calling amen there's gonna be a time where you're gonna have to get on the plane and you're gonna have to go here and there and everywhere because uh, God's gonna send you on assignment there you are a sent one says God and God's gonna send you with apostolic authority to go to certain regions to build and to plant and God said there's a team coming around you. Matter of fact, the team is already starting to form. There's a team coming around you that, that will undergird you and help you as you do work and you do ministry over there where you're at and beyond. So God bless you, woman of God. There is such a, a, a grace upon your life. And because you gave God a yes, God said there is a, that yes that you gave him is going to perpetuate down into the family bloodline. Amen. There is going to be such a grace. There's going to be such a, a, a thing. And God is encouraging you even for uh, your future. I see the enemy coming against you in like a, a very, um, almost like trying to stop you. Like I said to, uh, before, the, the devils don't know our assignments, but the devils uh, have an understanding that there's something on us. And you don't have to worry about uh, those, 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 those tangible things, so to speak, because God knows exactly what you need. And I see your story being rewritten by God, where you're going to go into a place of, of just great demand and a great blessing. And, and you're gonna, God said he's going to make you happy again, uh, real happy. Amen. Not only working for him. Amen. But those around you will notice a change in your heart as you become happier because God's going to make sure that you are recompensed for your trouble. Amen. Amen, honey. Yeah. Aunt Debbie, hey, Aunt Debbie, you finally got on. <laughs> God bless you, Auntie. <laughs> Amen. Hope to see you soon. Amen. Um, it's going to gonna be, gonna be grand to see the whole family again. Uh, hopefully here soon. So God bless us. So Lord, we pray for Doreen that everything her heart desires may it come to pass in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, Aunt Debbie, God bless you. I'm glad you got on because the Lord's been talking to me about you all day. And I cannot let this day go by. So thank you for getting on because guess what? Now I can go to bed tonight because you, if I had to call you uh, tonight, <laughs> please forgive me out, out of your sleep. Amen. <laughs> Amen. God bless you. But, um, there is such a leadership call upon your life. And even, um, even when the devil has come, and I'm, I'm going back almost until like your, your adolescent years, there's always been a, a leadership trait upon you. And that trait never died, and it's in you. You have leadership qualities. Only, you know, God just puts certain uh, anointing on people. Well, one of your anointing, you have many, 
Um, but one of your anointings is leadership. And the devil has fought you tooth and nail to minimize your voice, to minimize your worth, and to minimize your future. And the devil, because you come from an elite line of women, I'll say it again because I got one, that same bloodline, an elite line of women, the devil has tried to minimize you almost to a point where you, um, you're not heard, so to speak. But there is such a, a, a grace on you, Auntie Debbie, that God is saying that he is going to make uh, all the years that the canker worm and locusts have eaten up. I see them just chomping away at finances. I see them chomping away at, at certain spheres of influence. I even see them chomping away even in the church house um, to make sure that you're minimized because of what the, the type of favor that's upon your life and what the devils do because they can't attack the favor, they can make you doubt the favor. So here is God. God is giving you this 2022 a whole brand new book. He knew the day was coming. A whole brand new book. And he says the first page says, uh, behold the woman of God who was restored. I'm reading it. Who was restored 10 times over. And she lived ha happily that and her family ever after. And I see God crowning you. I'm seeing you sit down in the chair and I see God crowning you. My God, even while we're here on this earth, crowning you in a, in a, before men and women, because God is making you, um, you should have been a lot further than where you were at in the ministry. But there was people around you who were demonized, who held you back. I'm looking at a meeting with two ladies and one man talking to a leader of uh, uh, trying to tear your name down. And because that particular leader was not strong in the spirit of counsel, he listened to the lies of hell. Amen. And so they tried to put you in a corner and put you in a box as if you didn't have the word of the Lord, but you do. Amen. So God says, because you kept yourself in a place of integrity and posture, God says he's going to raise you up. He says, I'm about to set down one and raise you up in their, in their place. And God said, because he knows when he puts you in that place of influence, you won't take it to the head as if it's your doing, but you will know it's God's doing. So I'm looking at years of restoration come upon your life. I'm talking about, I'm, I'm going back all the way to the 80s. I'm seeing 1980 was a tough year for you. And God said because the, the attacks were so heavy upon your life and that of your family in 1980. And I'm looking at 1985 and even the attacks were even greater. Woo! It was even greater, almost to the point where you almost decided to take your own self out of here. But God said, because you didn't listen to the lies of hell, God said, there is a full restoration coming for you. So he said, ready yourself, because this is the year where you are going to have full restoration and recovery. I see um, those who have stolen from you. I'm looking at this now. People have taken from you behind your back, and it is going to be given back to you, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. He said, God is filling your cup, and your oil shall run over. He said, your story is going to be the, you're going, to, you're going to be preaching and prophesying out of the pain you're healed from. Woo! Not the pain that's bound you, but the pain you're healed from. You're going to preach and prophesy, and you're not going to seek out revenge because God is, is, is the one who's going to speak up for you and talk for you and do certain things. There is such a grace upon you, ma'am. And I always say, but I, I say it very heavy on this one. There is, there is, there is double grace upon your life. There is a season God's bringing you into, even starting right now as I'm prophesying. There is a season. In the next, it's, it's almost like the rest of the year, you have preferential treatment anointing with God. God said, if you want it, he'll open the door. If you want it. If you want to close, he'll close the door. If you want to close. There are certain things for you that are open up just because God is going to show his favor in your life in such a way that it's going to make other people cry. Because you're gonna be, you are not, you're not gonna be, you are so blessed. God said the perpetual blessing, it's been waiting for this day to be released upon your life. And I see even um, your seed of uh, being able to prosper in this thing and come into alignment. There's even even the whole thing, um, you know, I can't say much of be family, uh, even the whole thing, so we'll talk more. Um, you're just gonna be blessed, ma'am. Amen. There is double for your trouble. And you're gonna find yourself. You have in you, woo, you have in you, I'm looking at at least uh, six or seven books 
There are six or seven books inside of you on leadership and followership that should have been published years ago. But the devil talked you out of writing down your thoughts. He said, oh, don't do that. No, no one's going to listen to you. And because during that season, there was people trying to minimize your voice, you kind of put that to the side. But you have the gift of the ready writer already. It's been that way since you were a child. Um, God said, your, your mind and your hands have been anointed the first time you came to the earth. And God wants you to go back and visit those, those dreams and go back and visit those visions of you writing and different certain things. He, God said he's going to publish your books if you get to writing. You will have, I just see you standing in front of people. And I don't mean, I don't mean a, a little bit of folks. I'm talking, I mean, you're standing in front of people almost like, um, I don't know why they saw Colin Powell, but at a, at, at a, a high influential level uh, in, a, in a pants suit, you're talking about the this and that, and talking about the pillars of leadership, and you're giving it to church leaders, you're being sought after even in, in your local community and beyond, there is such a, a um, understanding of the topic of leadership inside of you, and people need to hear what you have to say. He said those books are not only going to bring you great wealth, but it's going to change the trajectory of the entire family because that's going to be a lot of royalties coming off that uh, that the family will get to benefit from. Amen. Those who are under <clears throat> your particular uh, bloodline. You want a second? Give me a little water here. Mm. Oh, thank you, honey. Ooh, that was cold. Amen. <laughs> God bless you. But Auntie, you are so blessed. Um, I am just uh, in awe of the, how God is going to use you. Uh, and you see, there, there is a great turnaround for you. Woo! I, I'm telling you, I see the great turnaround. Like that 360 camera. It's a great turnaround for you. And everybody's going to see it. People who have written you off and said you can't get it and you don't deserve it. But there is a great turnaround, and the same people who said that are going to be the ones coming to sit at your feet asking for help. And because your heart is right, my God, you, just, you, have, you have the right heart in the entire matter. Amen? So God said he has not forgotten about you. He has not forgotten about you. He has not forgotten about your, field, your, your, your family. He said you have uh, stood the test of time. And just like it was for, um, who in the Bible? Um, just like it was for, God, what's it? Is it like that one right there? Yeah, Deborah. Just like it was for Deborah. Amen. There is such an influence. I just had to get that right. <laughs> influence. And you will have your Barack there. Amen. That, that is so. My God, I see partnership being rekindled. I see partnership coming uh, in right alignment. I see things being lined up how they're supposed to be. Amen. So happiness and tranquility and prosperity is your portion. Prepare yourself, ma'am, before the IRS is about to send you a refund check that they failed to send you years ago. I ain't talking about 2021. I'm talking about something that's been sitting in the balance. Your name was um, has come into a, to a glitch, and I see the angel of the Lord putting his hand into the computer system, making that thing right. And there is, matter of fact, this happened to a lot of people in the family, and a lot of people on tonight. I just saw that. A lot of people on tonight. There is a, a, a there are refund checks coming for people on tonight. Amen. There I see the angel putting his hand, and I ain't talking because you filed your taxes uh, last week. I'm talking about there were some distinct errors that were not caught by the system that has cost people money. I'm talking about thousands upon thousands of dollars. There has been some, some error, and that is, oh, my God, Miss Debbie, I'm telling you, ma'am, you, that check is coming. <laughs> Mark the word on tonight. That check is coming. I see your name on it. Amen. So God bless you, ma'am. You, I mean, you are not, you are not, God said, you are not finished. Woo, you are not, you are just getting started in ministry. God says you are such an intercessor. That mantle is all over you. My God in heaven, that mantle is all over you. You have the ability to go into the enemy's camp and take back what was stolen. So God says, even now, they said the next 21 days, dig into your intercession mantle and pray for people, pray for situations, 
pray for your family, pray for those things you were, you were believing him for, and God says, watch him turn it towards you in an expeditious manner. Amen. I'm not talking waiting 20 years for it. I'm talking about quick manifestation because the heavens, plural, are open upon you and your family. How you serve your mother, my God, even in her latter years, how you serve and make sure she's taken care of, God says, because you have honored the elderly. He says, I'm also going to honor you, and you will never lack any good thing, God said, because you have taken care of one of his, his angels, he said. That's what he called, uh, he, that's what he called grandma, grandma, one of his angels, your mother, one of his, his chosen angels. That's pretty powerful. My God, we're going to prophesy to grandma next. Amen. <laughs> Amen. So the Lord is so kind. He said, because you have taken the time and you have made sure she was good and you made sure that she had what she needs. God said, that, that, your, your service towards the senior citizens. God says, you will never lack no good thing. And whatever you put your hands to do, whatever you open your mouth to say, God says, I will back it, says the Spirit of the Lord. So God bless you, Auntie. Lord, we just release every prophecy that's been released tonight and even over on Debbie God. Expedite, Father God, in the name of Jesus, that it come to pass. In the name of Jesus, my God in heaven. Oh, okay. All right, amen. Right now? Okay, amen. Hey, Miss uh, Deborah Waiters, how you doing, ma'am? God bless you all the way from Kuwait. God bless you. Amen. The Lord wants you to know. Woo. He wants you to know, I just saw this, that he is blowing in your ear. <laughs> now, what does that mean? God is about to download uh, a whole set of instructions for you to do. They're going to be impressions. But not only that, but you, ma'am, are about to go into a season of visions and dreams. I'm going to tell you why the devil harasses you. Amen. I'm going to tell you why. Because if you ever get to a point where you understand why you were created, you are now a tremendous threat to hell. Amen. This is why. And I see this. And we just rebuke the enemy. I see this so clear in the spirit. We just rebuke the enemy. I see I see a demonic force coming against you. As a matter of fact, it's been a sign to you. It's been a sign to you since you were a young little girl. I'm watching this, this old demonized demon uh, follow you around as you grow up. And this demon's job was to make sure that anything you put your hand to collapse, whether it be finances, whether it be uh, uh, relations. It's almost like um, because the door was open before you got here. I'm going back into your past. Now the word of knowledge is all the way over now. I'm going back into your family past, the women specifically, and I'm seeing a, 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 a wicked man hitting on a woman. I'm telling you what I know. I'm, I'm, telling, I'm, I'm back way back in the 1800s. <laughs> I'm looking at how they dress. Hitting on a woman and almost uh, to a point where um, the woman was feared for her life. But that created a stronghold in the women that were to come. And so what does that mean? That means that the devil has concocted a plan that every woman in the family would not enjoy relationships. So the devil has come against you and yours hard in that arena. They, they have dispatched counterfeits. Counterfeits have left. And there is a demon there trying to enforce it. But on this day, my God in heaven, the curse is broken. And you're going to find yourself, ma'am, there's nothing you did bad, by the way. You're going to find yourself, woo, I even see a good man that you was married to. Woo. It wasn't him, God says. It was the thing behind the veil. All right, God in heaven. God has showed me that. It wasn't him. It was what was behind the scene. And that thing behind the scene is so mad at me right now, I can see it boiling up fire right now. <laughs> <laughs> but God is so kind that he reveals to redeem. So, ma'am, I'm telling you on tonight that your life is just beginning. I'm telling you, Miss Deborah, that um, there is such a call upon your life. And even at your age now, when the devil might, might try to say that you, that you have went past and you missed it, God said you didn't miss anything. Because now is the time of your revealing. He had to take you uh, away. And the reason why you're away, because you need time with God. Because God's about to change things in your life. Because there's going to be a great reveal for you. 
And God says that it's going to be such a great reveal that you're going to find yourself um, on platforms that you're going to be scratching your head. How did, I, how did I get here? Because you're not going to have to rub elbows with nobody to get there. Your name has been pulled from the back to the front. So I see God just using you, even where you're at now, in a powerful way. Even your dream life is about to expand. I mean, you already dream now, but there is a, 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 a grace to dream and to know and to see and to understand. And God has opened that thing up all the way wide. My God. And God said, because you have stayed faithful to him, even when situations weren't ideal, God says that you don't have to worry about your grandchildren. He said, they will not experience any calamity. As a matter of fact, I see the escorts of heaven walking with your daughters and walking with your grandchildren. And I even see double blessing upon the entire family. There is not even only a grace for you, but because of your obedience, God says, he says, I will do it to the third and fourth and fifth generation. Amen. So God is going to use you because of your faithfulness. A lot of the blessings that a lot of us walk in now, and I'm one of them, is because of the faithfulness of my own mama. Amen. So that is going to be the, the testimony of your children that they're going to wake up and call you blessed. Amen. I'm telling you, they're going to say, grandma is so blessed. Mom is so blessed. My God. And you're going to get, um, there was years of restoration coming back to you where God says, I'm making my daughter smile again because I'm going to do things for her that she did not ask for. And the things that have been, uh, been plaguing her, I'm removing them out the way on this day because you came in contact with God's, uh, God's uh, mouthpiece and what he's talking to you through. Amen. There is such a, a relief coming to you. God said, you don't have to worry about a thing, man. He said, he is not done with you yet. <laughs> So prepare yourself, Miss Deborah. Prepare yourself for your powerful restoration. Years that the canker worm has taken from you. Years that the devils have tried to make a spectacle of your life. Years. The reason why he had to walk out is because he was not of God to begin with. And so God says in the future, he says, because of his love for you, he said, Boaz will show up. Woo! And there will be prosperity. And there will be uh, happiness in the union. And there will be conversation. There will be fun, God says. Ooh, I heard that. There will be a lot of fun. Because God's going to show you himself through Boaz. And I'm telling you, ma'am, and it's going to come so swift. You don't, have, you don't have to wait because that's a desire of your heart. And God says he is true to his word. He said, matter of fact, because of just the, how he sees you, he sees you as a person of love and he wants to love on you. So God is going to show out and show up for you. And not only you, but that of your family. God is going to help you, my man. Woo. God's going to bless you. My God in heaven. It's already done. So prepare yourself, get ready. I see you traveling back uh, to you, you, the United States, um, back and forth, because you, um, this is just the way God's going to do it. Not for, for permanent resident. God, God's going to give you the option if you would like to come back or not. Amen. <laughs> but anyway, um, the Lord is so kind. Amen. God bless you, Miss Waiters. And God said, watch him visit you. There is a great, um, can I say this? There is a great uh, visitation uh, coming for you uh, from God because he's going to show you how real he is. He said he's going to show up and it's not going to be in like you're in a dream state. You, I'm telling you, I'm, I'm looking at the scene. The Lord's going to show up and it's just going to be you and him. And he is going to talk and love upon you. It's going to shock you, matter of fact, because the devil has tried to lie to you about God and his relationship. His, his uh, concern or his, your own his heart. But God, watch what God do. Amen. Thank you, Miss Waiters. And they had to reject, I see that as a kid. They had to reject you as a kid because you're different. I see that so plain. You've always been a peculiar person, a peculiar kid. And what people thought was weird, uh, somebody being weird, was just your uniqueness. You have a very sharp mind. You have, you have a very, um, um, a stoop mind, so should I should I say very very um very sharp. I use I use that word very sharp, and because God has put His hand upon you even at a, a young age, and I've seen it what it's, what it's supposed to be. God was going to use your mind to change certain things, 
there is, um, and this is even going to happen in the future, there is creative ability inside of you where you can invent things. That's the type of mind you have where you can invent things and they'll come to fruition. And God says he's going to take you back at a time when you were a, a young lady, a young child, and that was in all your forethought because God's going to show you that even with his, uh, even with his, oh, my mom calling me. You tell my mom I'm, I'm prophesying, please. Listen, my mama calling me, and she know I'm prophesying on Thursday night. Amen. Thank you, honey. God bless you. <laughs> anyway, back to, back to you, Miss Parker. That's my mom. You know, she can call. I don't know how she bypassed my do I disturb thing. But anyway, that's all good. But, man, I'm telling you, there is sharpness upon you. Sharpness and creative ability. Amen. So God bless you, ma'am. God bless you, Miss Waitress. And thank you so much for all your support. And may God uh, triple and bless you in a mighty way for what you've done for the Life Center and what you've done for my wife. May God bless you, my God, for what you've done. I'm talking about the perpetual blessing. What? It's just over and over and over again. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I'm on to something else. <laughs> thank God for my wife. She's going to talk to her now. Amen. Amen. <laughs> oh, gosh. God bless you. Um, amen. Amen. God bless you, Miss Waiters. Was somebody else I saw here? Um, was somebody else I saw, honey? Uh, let me see. Uh, let me see. Ooh, Miss um, Samelia Eugene. I hope you're still on here, ma'am. I hope you are still on here because God wants to talk to you. Amen. And what the Lord is saying is he, when I when I saw your name pop up, he said, there is a such a spirit of might upon Miss Eugene. Woo! My God, ma'am, you are so blessed. Amen. There is such a spirit of might. I see you in the spirit realm almost like you are a warrior for the kingdom. You are a strategist. You you understand certain things. You know how to put things in place. You're a strategic thinker because you have a builder's anointing all over you. Woo! You have such an anointing on you that it's it, no, it, it not it, it is an apostolic spirit upon your life. You know how to build. Amen. You know how to build. <laughs> And you've been this way since you were a young lady and even down back to your childhood because God has a great call upon your life. Amen. And I see God using you um, almost like on, I see you, I mean, I'm, I'm seeing you in armor, but I'm seeing you on, on, the, on the battlefield commanding and giving direction and helping people. That's what I'm saying, honey. <laughs> I'm trying to explain this. It's almost like um, um, you, you know, you you, you know how to command and be a commander. And God said the apostolic spirit is, is, is so, so much on you that the, the, the call of God upon your life is to not only build people, but to build, help them build plans and strategies for the future. I see God taking you on a journey in this next 12 months um, where he's going to reveal himself to you even the more in such a way that it's going to be um, almost like shocking, not only people around you, but it's going to be shocking to you. I see you coming in contact um, with a lot of influential people um, that we, sometimes we even see on TV because your name is, God, God is blowing on your name as a, as a master strategist. That's what he called you to do. And even going to, uh, <laughs> she said, I had to pull over this word, <laughs> even going into the future, I'm looking almost like a, um, because you're a builder, you have a entrepreneur. In fact, you are an entrepreneur. Um, a great, you have a spirit of entrepreneurship all over you. And I'm looking down at the table. I'm seeing you sit down. And I've never been before in my life. But I'm, I'm looking at you sign contracts. And I see uh, almost like, um, uh, you know, almost like, can I say this? I don't know if you know like motivational speakers like Eric Thomas and David Goggins, um, but I'm seeing people ask me how much, uh, how much would you uh, charge for you to come out and speak to my corporation? There is a phone call coming from a major corporation, 
and they're going to ask you not only to come and help them strategize, but also to, uh, if they're going to ask you, can you speak to the people? And God's going to give you almost like a double grace on how to, how to move in a level of exhortation where you're going to be talking and coaching, but it's going to be so motivating that they're going to, it's going to start to kickstart your whole entire life, so to speak. I mean, you're not stuck right now, but you think you're busy now. It's going to be so busy that you're going to have to tell people no. Not because you want to, but because you're going to get, you, God's going to make you so busy, but not only so busy, but so busy and fruitful at the same time. So I see God using you in, in, that, in that realm because just the way God has designed you. I see the enemy coming against you in a mighty way. And that was a part of your development and training, God said. He came against you in the early part of your life. Um, I always say this, where, where we're most developed at. And God said he had to allow certain things to happen because he was building the warrior inside of you. And so you have a, an ability about you where you have an understanding that um, confidence is your portion. And you teach that and you walk like that and you have confidence and people are going to come around you and say, how do I do this? And you're going to sit down and show them how to build strategies out one by one. Amen. So woman of God, get ready. Get ready for your future. Get ready for something grand to happen. This is going to be the best year of your life. 2022, Miss um, Eugene, is going to be not only the best year of your life and even beyond, but this year there are things God is going to expedite just for you. I'm telling you, God is going to expedite business deals. God's going to expedite favor. God's going to expedite strategies. There are certain things that God is going to do for you um, that are in your heart. Amen. And I see you going into, into um, almost like school. I keep saying, I keep saying schools. Going into schools and teaching and helping them and showing them. Almost like a professor. I don't even know what you do for a living. But I just see you over the schools. Amen. Almost like you have, you're getting a contract with universities and, and high schools and, and what, 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 whatever the case may be. But I, I just see you on a platform. I'm trying to explain it all, but I just see a whole bunch of schools. I don't know what you do for a living, man. But man, God is going to expedite you in the spirit realm and it's going to expedite even in the natural. Amen. So prepare yourself. Get ready. God said he is well pleased with you. He's well pleased with your life. Uh, you have set your goals. You have accomplished your goals. And God says, now is the time for you to walk in full manifestations. He said that the reason why certain people left is because when you go high in God, certain people cannot go with you. Amen. Certain people can't go with you this high the way you're going. So may God bless you, Mr. Eugene. May God use you in such a mighty way. And may God continue to open the heavens upon your life. Um, that you will not have room enough to receive all that God has for you. Amen. So be blessed, ma'am. God bless you. And may your business and may everything you put your hand to prosper. Amen. God bless you. And keep on dreaming, God just said. Keep on dreaming. Woo. My God. He said he'll make your dreams a reality. He said if you write it down, God says he'll make it happen for you. Amen. You have the blank check of the Lord upon you. So write what you will and don't consider the cost of it. Because God said if you need a facility, he'll get you one. He's not talking about you having to go and lease anything. He's talking about so much favor will people give you what you need. Because there's so much honor and favor upon your life. Amen. Amen. Uh, going back to... Um, Auntie Debbie, this came to me. Auntie Debbie, there is, and you can probably take it, Auntie, this honey, if she's not on no more. Auntie Debbie, I just saw this. The Lord said that uh, healing is your portion. And it's going to be manifested, amen? And you will uh, move in divine healing. God says, preservation of life is upon you, amen? Preservation of life, amen. I want to say it to Auntie Debbie, amen, the last little bit there. It just came to me. The Lord is fine. Amen. So my wife is going to uh, uh, text that to her. Amen. <laughs> Amen. God bless you.
Miss Eugene, God bless you. I'm excited about your future. Amen. I just saw somebody come on here. Um, and if you've got a word from, uh, from the Lord, I'm just trying to get uh, people who um, who I may not have um, may not have, have talked to. Amen. Miss um, Dana Parker. I'm sorry if I, if I said that wrong. Please forgive me. Uh, D A I N A H. I'm sorry, Miss Dana Parker. Um, hopefully you're still there. Uh, but the Lord is wants to talk to you on today. Amen. So the Lord is so kind. Um, <laughs> I see you covered, uh, Miss Parker, Dana Parker, in the blood of Jesus. I see your life, and I see I see a painter painting a beautiful portrait of your life. And God says the devil has tried to come in. It's to make you think that your life isn't worth anything or try to come to your thought life and doubt certain things. But God said, this is him in this season. And for you to not be afraid because God said he is stretching you. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Eugene. He is stretching you um, to a place where he's making it a little uncomfortable but at the same time, he's put, he's imparting your next inside of you. Because not only this, there's a great call to a higher level of ministry, Ms. Parker. There is a higher calling that God is going to pull you up to. Because of your heart, because of your, you know, your posture with him, God said this is the year that things for you are going to get easier. Um, there was a time where things were, were uh, I want to say hard. But you, you, you had a, it was almost like, I don't want to say a rough season. It wasn't like a rough season. It was a time of development, so to speak. Amen. And God says that that was a time where his full picture is going to come out for you. Amen. God is going to use you in certain spheres of influence that are not even coming to your mind yet. And I see you. I see you have this um, thing about excellence. And that's God put it inside of you. And so that has attracted your name to certain levels, amen, of, of influence and, and prestige. And even if people have not pulled you into the fold, God has. So God is going to use you in such a way that it's going to make the naysayers wonder what happened to the old uh, Dana. Because they're not going to understand this new one, amen. This new Dana coming out is almost like... Um, it's almost like I just saw a curtain open. It's almost like it's your time, and it is your time, amen? It's your time to be on the stage. Because the way, the way God has trained you and the way God is stretching you, it's your time to be on the stage. I don't even know. I'm, I'm going to say this by faith, amen? Um, I don't even know if you have a desire to sing. Um, this is what I'm seeing right now. Uh, it can be a whole lot of things, but I'm saying it by faith because I, that's what God has showed me. You're coming out. Uh, onto a, uh, onto, I don't even know, um, onto a stage. But the the meaning of the whole vision I'm looking at is people are in, are in awe about what you're presenting. Amen. So it's your time right now, and it's gonna be your time. Amen. And God's not going to stop what He's trying to do with you. I see the crowd almost like um um in shock and awe, almost as if, like, um, we heard, like, Whitney Houston singing the Super Bowl back in the 80s or back in the 90s. I see, like, people are just, like, in shock, like, wow, that's the level of influence God it has given you. And you're going to find this 2022 a year of great recompense. It's going to be a great year of reward. It's going to be a great year of just full restoration to you and your family, my God in heaven. There has been almost like an, an assault that came come, had come against you. Woo! And I see a bunch of people uh, backbiting and trying to tear your name down. Almost, almost like I'm looking at them in a huddle, uh, whispering about, about you. <laughs> but God said, because you kept your posture, you kept your heart right, um, God says that you are going to um, um, be elevated uh, even in the midst of enemies. Amen. This is why you don't fit into every circle because of what's upon your life. Amen. There is um, separation, almost like when a, 
uh, the Holy Ghost told Paul to separate, or told the, the apostles to separate uh, um, Barnabas and whomever else uh, for the work of the Lord, for the ministry. There's a separation coming for you for greater work. You see it, and you'll feel it, and you don't have to worry about uh, things shifting around to a point where you can't juggle it. God is going to give you the grace and the balance to, to um, be able to do what you have to do and not lose anything in, in, in the transition. There, your life is about to shift. Right, there we go. Your life, even your territory, is about to change for the better. I see the upgrade. I see the upgrade in all types of things. I see the upgrade in just around your personal effects. I see the upgrade in, in God's putting his hand on your mind. I see the upgrade not only in that. I see upgrades in your health. My God of heaven, I see that so plain. So may God bless you, woman of God. And go forth and enjoy this year. Enjoy the blessing of the Lord this year and beyond. Because it's a perpetual blessing. And that shall be uh, a part of your uh, mantle. Amen? Amen. Oh, man. Let's see here. God bless you, Miss Dana Parker. So, Lord, we thank you for Dana uh, Parker on tonight. That every prophetic word, every encouragement, in the name of Jesus, um, be her portion and no hindrance, nothing holding it back in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Uh, let's see here. I'm trying to see who else I got. Honey, who else I got? Okay. I don't, I don't see all the comments, but my beautiful wife is, is uh, passing me the names. Who's next, baby? Sharifa. Perry, amen. Boy, does that last name sound familiar? <laughs> hey, Sharifa, how you doing? How you doing, family? God bless you. Amen. Is you on? You guys allow me to to sip on this uh, purified Holy Ghost water. Mm. I hope my lips ain't ain't chapped. Mm -mm. The Lord is kind. Amen. Yes, ma'am. Miss Sharifa, how you Sharifa, honey? Sharifa Perry. Amen. God bless you, Miss Perry. Amen. The Lord is saying for you, uh, Sharifa, that many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them out of them all. You have such a heart of gold. I'm looking at it. And the heart of gold is not a, a flaw which people have in times past has tried to tell you was a, uh, a, a negative trait. That heart of gold was given to you by God himself. Because guess what? You have the ability, based on how you love people, to bring them out of a, 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 a dark area, out of a dark time. God... If you feel like it or if you know this or not, God is um, so in love with you. As a matter of fact, I just heard the Lord say that I'm going to pull her into a place of prominence. There is a, a, um, a position coming open for you. I don't know if you're searching for promotion or what the case may be, but there is a higher position for you, not only in your secular work, but also in the church house. Amen. There is a pulling up for you. There has been a suppression demon to keep you um, bound. There has been a cap placed over you by hell. And I'm, I'm looking at this cap, and I'm seeing where the devil used uh, certain people through words and decrees to put a cap over you, as if you don't have what it takes for the next level. So the, um, the Lord has said on this day, he has removed the cap. You're going to find yourself, I'm telling you, ma'am, this is the year... 2020 you 2022 for double promotion for you what does that mean that means you're going to get promoted in one season of this year and then get promoted again because the favorite has now overtaken you your whole situation at work is going to change i see a a, a wicked boss trying to make uh life difficult for you but god says that he and <laughs> Yes, Lord. He is going to make you, um, since you've been faithful over little, he's going to make you ruler over much. He has seen the anguish. He has seen the tears. 
He has had the conversations with you on the way to the job to encourage your heart. And God says, on you, just, you, are, you are coming to a place of prominence. He said, you know, when God is building champions, he takes them through dry seasons. And even though they may be in a dry season, and it may be as if uh, hell has come against them, there is a suddenly for you. And that's going to happen. Amen. I'm telling you, as God's prophet, that's going to happen. A suddenly. And then another suddenly. And you're going to find yourself like, what did I do to deserve all this? I, I'm looking at you at the table, at your kitchen table. And I'm seeing the pool of tears because you're, just, you're sitting there with your hands uh, in, in your face, happy, but don't understand why, what happened. You, you're not you're not comprehending and that's okay because the prophet tonight is telling you what God is saying is going to happen but it's going to be so good it's going to be a blessing to your entire family amen you have worked hard for where you're at and you have been overlooked I'm telling you you have worked really hard you have been misunderstood you have been mistreated you have been uh, put in the back to be quiet you, you have been minimized because the devil can't stand, again, the women in your bloodline. I'm telling you what I know. He can't stand them because of what y'all carry, the elite level of ladyhood. Amen. Womanhood, excuse me, bad grammar. Amen. Elite level. And when you have elite level, and then when you have uh, offspring coming out of you, th those young girls become elite level. So why not try to minimize the favor that's upon your life and minimize your voice? But God says, like a young lioness, he's causing you to roar. My God. He said, they may have counted you out, but God says he counted you in when they counted you out. He just took you through a little bit of development because what's coming for you is grand leadership. I'm talking about where they're going to rewrite, reconstruct your salary for you. Amen. And God says when it's time to reconstruct your salary, the Lord is saying don't hold back on what you're asking for. Because whatever you ask for, they can do it and then some. My God in heaven. So just go ahead and God says, go ahead because he's giving you the blank check. He says, Do you, for you to be encouraged, my God, for he's seen the years of tears. He's seen the years of struggle. He even seen the devils come at you and try to put doubt in your mind that God is not concerned with you. <laughs> but the devil is still a liar. I'm telling you, he is still a liar. There's no truth in him. Amen. God has had you on his, his mind for a very long time. And he said, for you chiming in tonight was all a design by God. As a matter of fact, today was a bit difficult for you because the devil was trying to keep you from getting on his Facebook Live tonight. That's why he was trying to throw certain things at you that usually don't come at you. Because if you would have got this word tonight, or would not have gotten this word tonight, the devil would have had some more time to handcuff you. But it's not so. Amen. God is using you, man. I don't, man, I'm telling you, it is, it is your time as well. Amen. So you find your, you're going to find yourself. I'm looking in the next, uh, this year going to be great. I'm looking down the road that I'm seeing Miss Perry with a tremendous smile. Amen. And you're going to know only God can do this. And you have such an evangelical anointing upon you. You're going to talk about the goodness of God, amen, about your life and what God can do. And that's going to bring hope and restoration to people who've given up because you're going to be able to uh, um, identify, identify, my God, with people who may have lost hope and who are, may have not been able to, um, who, who can't think beyond. There is an, an, a beyond anointing coming upon you where you can think beyond what you see. My God, I'm telling you, Miss, Miss Perry, Miss Sharif, God bless you so much, fam, that you, you're having complete restoration. God's going to do it for you because you've been on his mind and on his heart. Amen. And even this night, <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm glad you're listening, ma'am. Amen. And you can always and you can always go back and, and, uh, and replay this too as well to, to jot down notes. 
Um, I'm telling you, I don't know if you have children or not, um, but I see just a favor even in that area. <laughs> I don't know, but I see favor in that area. My God in heaven. I don't know, um, nieces, nephews, aunties, you, you know you know how every family got that favorite auntie, amen? Because I know uh, for my kids, uh, uh, Nikki is one of their favorites, <laughs> amen? But that, that, favorite, that favorite auntie, but you, you come into favor even with the, 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 the young crowd, amen? The young children, because of the, great, the heart you carry is full of gold. And this is why the devil has tried to uh, use certain people to try to break down your worth. Woo. <laughs> trying to break down your voice. I'm telling you, the devil has tried over and over again to uh, silence you because of what you carry. But you watch what happened in the next uh, two to five years, and even this year is going to be a great year of restoration. Um, I'm looking forward to meeting you out there where you're at. Amen. Uh, I'm looking forward to, to meeting the entire, that side of the family. Amen. So, um, we just bless God for you, um, uh, Sharifa. And I'm telling you, you're such a blessing to many people. You are a silent leader. But God is going to make that silent voice roar now. Because it is your time. It is time for favor. It is time to go to the next level. Even when people have counted you out, uh-uh. Count yourself in because God has approved you. And God will use you. Amen. Your life is just beginning. I'm telling you, your life is just beginning because the elite lady status has to be trained. It has to be. that The devil has stolen that from the women. And he has put before the women twerking and jerking. But the elite ladies are now standing up. My God in heaven. And it's going to put purity back in a place. And you're going to be one of the ones that God uses at the elite level. And young ladies are, are going to aspire to be around you because how you carry yourself and how you don't take mess from nobody. And, but you're still loving at the same time. Watch what he does. I'm telling you, you're going to find yourself, now I'm in the future now, you're going to find yourself being a mentor to many. You're going to find yourself being a mentor to many young ladies. You're going to find yourself travailing with these ladies in prayer. You're going to find yourself counseling these ladies and helping them and telling them what their worth is. You're going to help them even when it comes to marriage. They're going to come ask you, should I marry this man? And you're going to have an instinct ability that's already in you to discern if this Boaz or is this bozo? You're going to have that ability. My God in heaven. And I'm telling you, God is using you in a way um, that's going to shock not only you, but it's going to shock the entire family. You're going to be... <laughs> I don't know. You're going to be such a, a counselor. The spirit of counsel and the spirit of wisdom is all on you. That's why um, uh, people from the past have tried to silence your voice and put you in the closet because of the, of the uh, counsel and the wisdom that's upon your life. I'm telling you, there is the, the elect, elite lady status. That's what you are, ma'am. I'm telling you, that last name and those women, I'm, I'm married to one, so I know what I'm talking about, amen? That elect lady, leading lady status will be perpetuated down the bloodline and those who come into your sphere of influence. I see God dispatching broken women to you, even as I'm prophesying. I'm watching broken women walk down the street in tears. They've been beat up by a man. They had to go and hunt and find their own food. They had not been taken care of, and they're going to come and seek refuge and seek a word and you're going to be able to love them and counsel them and mantle them and pray with them and help them get back on their feet and they'll never go again to a wolf's house. Woo! I'm telling you what I know. Amen. I'm seeing it as plain as I'm looking at my wife to my right. Amen. I'm looking right at the whole thing. Women walking down the street to come knock on your door asking, uh, can they talk to you? You're going to find yourself busy. So stay before him. Amen. Because you're going to need a uh, fresh anointing when these women come. Because they're going to be broken. Amen. And God's going to make sure that you get filled back up because you're going to be pouring out a lot. That has been your calling since you were a little girl. Always the one to provide counsel and wisdom. Always the one that everybody flocked to. And you did not know because that's an anointing on you. You have an anointing to draw them in. I'm telling you, ma'am. 
So God bless you, Miss Perry. You are going to find yourself, ma'am, in the limelight, giving God the praise and giving him the honor and the glory. Amen. So God bless you, ma'am, woman of God. We honor you on today. We honor you. Honey, get um, we honor you, uh, and I just can't wait to meet you. Amen. So God bless you. You know, you are family. You are welcome to call um, us anytime um, uh, you need to. Amen. Amen. I need to charge it, honey. Yeah. So I was just asking my wife to, to do something. Miss Cassandra, hold on one second, ma'am. I hear the word of the Lord for you, too. Miss Cassandra uh, uh, Cottrell. Sorry if I messed your name up. Amen. Sorry to plug my laptop in because we we going into the after party now. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Miss Cassandra, ma'am, God bless you, Miss Cassandra. Recompense. Recompense. You asking God how long? What about me? And God said, Now it is your time, ma'am. What about me? He has not forgotten about you. What the Lord's gonna do for you is He's bringing you back into a full. Circle. Listen, the Lord has not kicked you out of the kingdom. The devil is a liar. Amen. I'm seeing the devils trying to take a lot of stuff from you to bring on a level of stress because they've been trying to kill you for a long time. But God says, recompense. I see the bold letters right before me. Recompense is your portion. Amen. <laughs> 2022, the heavens of the Lord are open. The heavens are open. <laughs> I'm telling you, ma'am, they are so open. I'm talking about stress from the east to the west. And God said there has been uh, blessings held up because of the warfare that you were, uh, were going through. But God says now that you're coming out of it now. You're not going to go through like everybody else goes through all year, all their life. Now you're coming out of it. You come into a season of answer prayer. You've been praying to God a whole lot over the years about certain situations, about grandchildren, about your life, about what happened with this. And it's almost as if the devil said, God don't hear you. But God heard every word. And now is the time for your answers to come to you. There's going to be answers that you ask him about that happened um, uh, years ago that you, you were waiting for answers for. But your answers are on the way without hindrance. Amen. So you, ma'am, Ready yourself. Amen. You don't have to worry about the future. I'm, I'm looking at You don't have to worry about if you're going to uh, have this or have that or have enough. You don't have to worry about that. God says that he's going to see to it that you have more than enough and you have everything you need. And he says he's even going to grant some wants. Woo. So whatever you desire, the word of the Lord says, Whatever you desire, he said, ask and believe that you receive as soon as you ask and you shall have them. I'm telling you, ma'am, I see, I'm looking, I'm going over your life as I'm looking for my mother desk here. And I see where hell tried to set traps for you along the way. Almost to a point where there's one point in your life where you almost lost your mind. But God says, not so. His hand has been upon you. And the devils may have been crying loud and barking loud, but the angels of God were fighting back on your behalf. There was somebody praying for you. And you don't even know, to know it, but somebody is infatuated with you in a very loving way. And there is so much favor with this person. And they're in your family, amen. But they have prayed for you. And I'm telling you that you are going to get everything um, that you believe in God for. God wants to show himself mighty in your life. And he's going to. He's going to show you that he is realer than real. And those dreams that you had, even as a young lady and a little girl, and those encounters that um, you didn't have language for, God said he's bringing those back to you. You're going to find yourself this whole year, you're going to be dreaming a whole lot. Oh, my God. You are going to be dreaming so much that you're going to have to keep you a notebook and you're going to have to keep you a pen next to your bed because in these dreams, it's going to contain the future. 
And what you write down, these manuscripts you write down, will be read by your family 20 years from now. Amen. These are going to be instructions about how to carry the oil into the future. You have to write this. This is important. This is how God's using you in this hour. You have to write down your dreams because when that day comes and your family sits down to read some of your writings because you can write. Amen. <laughs> the devil's try to lie to you and say you can't. God says, oh, yeah, he put it inside of you. And you will have a scribe anointing. So you have the ability to write things down and understand them and write clearly. God says, write down your dreams because they are going to help the family into the future. For, because that's how the oil, again, is going to be carried and passed on because instructions are left. Now, you're not going to win on time soon. So I'm not saying that. I'm telling you, I'm looking. I'm in the future. Future. Amen. My God in heaven. And it's going to be a blessing. And it's, it's going to bless you too. Amen. I'm telling you. You have some very unique grandchildren, I believe. I, I, just, saw, uh, I just saw two um, maybe light-skinned boys. I've never met your grandsons or anything like that. But I, I just saw two boys just come before me. Um, light-skinned, good hair, all this stuff. And God is going to use both of them. I'm talking about in a way that's going to shock everybody. I see one standing on, on the platform and he's teaching, um, he's teaching about um, not only the word of God, but he's teaching about science and God. Not no Scientology nonsense, but I'm talking about like uh, only he's talking to atheists and he's trying to com compel them to come to God. And this is why, because his mind is so sharp. This young man is a scientist at heart, but he's also going to be a saved scientist that understands only God can create all this. I'm telling you, matter of fact, he's, he's even now, even in school, he is very academically prestigious. Amen. So watch that one. And I see the other one being a great leader, almost like um, I don't see him going to the military, but he has that type of influence. Almost like he's able to command a decree and move things around and almost like a great businessman that's respected amongst people. Amen. Now, the thing about babies, they don't always look like what they're going to look like when they grow out, grow up. Amen. Sometimes babies come out looking like aliens. We know that they got all this stuff on them. They don't look like what they're going to look like in 10 years. Amen. And the same thing in the spirit. Sometimes a person don't look like what they're going to be based on what's happening now. Amen. So this is going to be, this, I'm telling you, it's going to shock everybody. But God has a, um, has a way of, of, of making things advance for all of us. Amen. <laughs> so I'm looking forward, Ms. Cassandra. God bless you, ma'am. And may that come to pass. I'm telling you, ma'am, God is showing himself to you in this season. God is showing himself to you. Watch, watch what he does. Your life is not going to look the same by this time next year. I'm telling you, I see upgrades all around you. I just walked past uh, an upgraded home. I just walked past upgraded vehicle. I just, I'm looking at upgraded accounts. I'm looking at an upgraded woman. Watch what God does with you. Amen. And you don't have to be perfect, God says. <laughs> the devil is a liar because there's no way you can be perfect. Amen. So you don't, you can put that aside and they don't have to stress you out anymore. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Woo. My God in heaven. Um, Amen. Amen, honey. I think I'm, oh, Jesus. <laughs> what time is Amen. Hey, listen, family. Um, I believe I'm done. I'm just, I'm scouring through here. Um, for tonight. I believe I'm finished. I believe uh, I'm just trying to make sure God is not uh, not saying anything um, concerning anybody else. Um, because God is, is, is so kind. That I'm gonna, I want to make sure that I, I get all this out that he wants to talk uh, to his people. Amen. So God bless you. Amen. Let's see. Um, let me see. All right. Yeah, I think I've um, I think I've hit everybody. Hey Amen. Well, everyone on tonight, thank you for viewing, honey. Have uh, anybody else? Okay.
All right. Honey is shutting down the prophet because the prophet got to go to work in the morning. <laughs> Hold up. I see one. Uh, Miss Jackie. Hello, ma'am. God bless you. I knew those. That's why I couldn't close it out. There was one more. I couldn't close it out. Amen. Miss Jackie. Miss Jackie, God bless you, ma'am. It is your time, Miss Jackie. For the spirit of the Lord will say to you to ready yourself because you are moving into a level of increased, um, not only anointing, but also God is enlarging your uh, bottom line. That means your, your, your pocketbook. God is, is an, an enlarging your pocketbook because you have been faithful with little. And God said he's not a, a God that he would um, not um, repay people who serve with a pure heart. And God said he's preserved your family because of such actions. But also he wants to show you, show something else to you, the other side of him, that the purse of the Lord is open to you. I see... Um, I just command the blessing upon your life in the name of Jesus. My God, I'm talking about, ma'am, where there is supernatural supplies for you and yours. I'm talking about super, I'm talking about with tangible results. I ain't talking about waiting for seven years. I'm talking about now. Supernatural supplies for you and your family. I don't know what you do for a living, Miss Jackie. I'm sorry. I never asked. Uh, but I know God is expanding that out to a massive arena. I don't know. Um, I'm in the future now. God said, that if you have faith enough, if you have faith enough, this is what the Lord is saying. He'll give you your own daycare if you have faith enough. And what that means is write the vision, make it plain. So he that really, uh, that run reason can run amen so god is going to use you ma'am i'm telling you uh miss jackie that god says he has your future in reserve for you now he needs your faith to go after it amen he said you've been faithful and you have desire to move in that level and god said granted god said granted that's what he just told me tell her it's granted just just go to go and get it go find your space Go find your place. Get your LLC set up if you don't have it. Get everything you need to set up and, and, and start preparing yourself uh, for a staff. And start preparing yourself for multiple people coming to your place of business. I'm telling you, Miss Jackie, you, God said give him three years of consistent hard work and watch what God does for you. Amen. He said that you will move by faith with him. He says you will be the poverty breaker for the family bloodline. Amen. God says you will keep moving him by faith, by faith, by faith. And he said the way to stay encouraged is to read the uh, heroes of faith located in Hebrews chapter 11. He said keep those scriptures in your spirit. Because God says he has approved you because your heart is postured and he can trust you with the next level of, of anointing and next level influence. He said you have been faithful over little, but now he will make you ruler over much. That's your portion, ma'am. I'm telling you, you will live your days in prosperity. You will live your time in peace. You will have the desires of your heart. You will not fail, says the Lord. You will not give in and you will not fail. You will open your wings uh, with the wind blowing. You will soar against the wind because God's going to take you up and you're going to go forth and you will not fail, says God, if you go in faith. Amen. Well, God bless you, Miss Jackie. Man, it's going to come. I can't wait to come visit you. Your, your, your establishment, your establishment, your, your wife and I, amen? Because guess what? Me and my wife are going to have some kids, so they need somewhere to go, amen? So don't forget your boy, 50% off for the profit, amen? God bless you, Miss Jackie. <laughs> and I am done, family. Hey, I am done for tonight. Um, thank you guys so much um, for tuning in and sticking with me and, and all the above. And God bless you. And those, every word that has come to pass, I've uh, been spoken tonight, God, we decree that it comes to pass without fail, Lord. And for those who need help, God, send your angels to help them along the way. 
in the name of Jesus. Amen. So, hey, family, God bless you. I am done for the night. Uh, we will be back here um, um, next, I don't know, honey. But we'll be back, we'll be back on Sunday. We're dealing with, um, what am I teaching Sunday? <laughs> I'm teaching on hindrances to purposes. And next Sunday, not this one, we're going to, I'm going to teach for the very first time the rematch. You don't want to miss all the Sundays. Amen. And next Thursday, we'll see uh, uh, what, 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 what we're going to do. Amen. God bless you. To my family on, online, thank you. I love you all so much. To everyone, we love you so much. Amen. And those, if you need anything, please send us a message. If you need anything for him, hey, Miss Connie, ma'am, you are so blessed. Don't leave just yet, Miss Connie. Find yourself, ma'am. You have uh, a few stores now, but I see you being elevated to the corporate office. Oh, yeah, I'm in the future now. I'm telling you, man, I'm seeing you going to the C-suite of that particular organization you work for. Amen. And you, ma'am, are going to be blessed, and you are blessed beyond measure. Your faithfulness is propelling you to the C-suite where you will be a decision maker for the entire uh, corporation. Amen. Hey, bro in law. I, hey, hey Larivo, I got my water, man. Mm -mm -mm. Mm. And that water's good, brother. God bless you, man. <laughs> Amen. Love you all so much. Amen. God bless you. And everyone take care. And we seal this with a heart of love and say thank you for your kindness. Amen. God bless you. And have a wonderful night. Have a wonderful night of sleep. And have a wonderful night of just knowing that God got us. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Hey, Michelle. God bless you, Miss Gonzalez. God bless you. Tell my brother I said hello, okay? Can't wait to meet you. God bless you.